Well, I want to congratulate you on your Netflix show, The Vince Staples Show. And I'm going to be honest with you as an actor, mm -hmm. things I auditioned for, because I auditioned for your show. I ain't see it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I ain't see it. Yeah. Uh, so, so, I, so, 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 I got to talk to my, my yeah, people about I, this. I ain't see it. Because uh, <laughs> I normally don't watch shows that I audition for, just mm -hmm. being an actor. It's just a little feel, yeah. thing that we mm -hmm. do. But you know, since you was on the, on our show, they gave it to us. I love the show. Oh, thank it, you. It I was appreciate definitely it. different. It's like a curb enthusiasm. I love everything about it. You kept it for sure Long Beach mm -hmm. all the way, even to the little Easter eggs. You know I what appreciate saying? that. You even wore the... Uh, What's the, the hoodie you had on, the Daniel oh, High yeah, School? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. shout out to Nate Dizzle. My thing is I want to ask you, how is it being able to world build, meaning you are an actor, mm -hmm. a writer on the show, and a producer? How do you take all that in, man, having you with your series and all that? How, how, how is this? Uh, it's extremely difficult, and I think that that's okay to say. Um, you know what I mean? I learned a lot of the time we go, man, it was a layup. It was this, it was really hard and it took a long time. It took like eight, nine years. Mm -hmm. wow. But I was, I was, um, around a lot of people who helped. Like it was so many levels to the show. Like, all right, you kind of doing a little short film stuff, utilize music video budgets, having conversations about that. Should we let him do this? We shouldn't let him do this. You know, you finna get his nigga. Like, you know what I mean? Little stuff. Like mm -hmm. we done heard some crazy stuff, man. And just working hard and just knowing that you got more work to do. And then, oh, you meet somebody who, you know, you meet people that's like, oh man, I love I loved the idea of the show. This is what my show was like. Do this. Or, oh, we can turn this to this. And then you meet somebody like Ken. I was just like, yeah, whatever you want to do, we can do it. You just got to know this is our TV work and anything else. Do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And then COVID happened. So mm. everything done for years. And then you were not even thinking about it. And then it popped back up. And I had a lot going on. Just like family stuff. My, my grandmother died. My brother died. All the stuff during oh, COVID, yeah. right? So it's all good. And then it's like, oh, yeah, hey, we got to do the show. And it's like, all right, cool. So like. Then you pick that back up, having meetings, consultations. You know, one of my homies, Calmatic, who directed kind of some shorts I did before and has been kind of consulting, producing on it. He was like, yeah, the show not going to happen if you don't write it yourself. He's yeah. like, if you don't write the show, it's not going to happen. He's like, go get Final Draft. It's $200. Sit down and write the show or it's going to be quiet. So, so getting on the phone, Maurice Williams, one of my showrunners, and be like, hey, how you do this? How do you do this? Well, how do you do a scene head? And it's like going from there and having conversations, people being like, hey, he writing the show? Is it going to have an encouragement of the writing room and encouragement, can encouragement of certain people? Like, and then, okay, this is the budget on the show. Okay, this is how budgets work. So you can do this, this, this. You can't do this. You can't do that. Say you're supposed to get however many days is, is, right. is, is, is perfect. Mm -hmm. We got half of that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, how do you make a television show in, in how do you make an episode of TV in three days mm -hmm. on location with a, with a small team? And in retrospect, those things are crazy, but it was so much support for, and belief for the people around that it felt like it was a layup while we were creating it. But you have to know the weight of what you're doing and the weight of kind of your accomplishments so you can know you know, when to pat yourself on the back and when you need to push yourself further. So it's really well, let me pat you on the back because yeah. you did good. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think by, from me watching it, I think you for sure is definitely established as a entertainer writer now. Mm -hmm. I think you will definitely get more jobs in this business, even if you're not playing in it. Mm -hmm. I think because what you did, you're a very weird motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Weird, <laughs> weird. But I like that because, you know, Rachel, you saw him. You're a nerd. Mm -hmm. Very nerd. You're a nerd in a crip. You always say that I don't even match or mix, but OK. But from watching your show. You was, you was very good at it. you like, I don't just watch a show and look at, oh, is this funny or whatever. I like it the acting. Yeah. I like the girl who played your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Loved her. She was very good. I loved, like, literally everything that, from the pieces how y'all was, man, it was a lot of stuff. I watched that shit in one day. Mm -hmm. Literally. I watched every episode in one day from even, who was the person? That, well, I don't want to talk. I don't want to give up nothing. They got, it's mm -hmm. coming out this <laughs> soon. But uh, he, you did a wonderful job, yeah. man. Definitely. You talking about the, the face paint, right? Yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he. The cast amazing. that he has is amazing. It's a lot of new cast members that y'all probably seen maybe once or twice. And literally, the cast was unbelievable. I was kind of mad I wasn't in it. I ain't gonna even lie. I was mad I wasn't in that <laughs> shit. And I said, I gotta sit next to his ass and do this goddamn conversation. <laughs> and he didn't put me in the show. Yeah. But, uh, well, we gonna, yeah, like like I said, gonna, we gonna talk about it. Yeah, yeah. We, gonna, we, gonna, we gonna talk about this. But, uh, Man, we got a season two. Yeah. You know, yeah. But you did a wonderful job, man. I'm very proud of because you 30 years old, black man, and you did stuff. You did you did something I haven't even done yet. You know what I'm saying? So I commend you on that, and you did a great job, dude. So anything that you fucking with, from what I've seen, how you your production is and is, I'm messing with you. I I'm appreciate with you. So that. You got That's me. Love. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. That, that really mean a lot, especially for somebody me, established. Like that really mean a you lot. Got me, man. It's I'm, hard. You know how hard it is to even start, and then mm -hmm. it's like you can do this, you can't do that. You can do this, you can't do that, and it's like just trying to make sure we pushing 
like just the way that we create certain stuff because a lot of the times we get a bad rap and people are like oh man nobody trying nothing new nobody trying to create it but you don't understand how much more difficult it is to do these things if it hasn't been seen in this light before so just being able to push i think is real important for us mm -hmm. you're doing it man I'm, i, I I'm do want to ask of the three you mentioned being a writer actor and mm -hmm. a producer on the series what was the most challenging role that you had to play or the the, the most challenging hat you had to wear throughout good question Pete. creating this series i feel like they kind of all came in the same kind of bucket because when you think about the production element of it and the questions that people are going to have, right? Mm -hmm. The question is, do he know what he's doing? Mm -hmm. Does he know about this? Does he know about that? Then we get into certain meanings and it's like, okay, when we have, when we have a uh, kind of pre-production means and I'm like, okay, I want to try to be able to live in wide shots, you know, similar to Swedish filmmaking, Roy Anderson, kind of more independent stuff, stuff where you kind of have almost, 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 almost play esque type things. Mm -hmm. We can't do that on TV. So then it goes back to having to research how you can do it on TV. When it, when has it been done on TV? What country has it been done in? What's the aspect ratio? What kind of LUTs can we use? What's going to be our dialogue style? How are we going to utilize music? It gets to all those other things. So then you have to produce, but then you also have to think, all right, this has to feel natural for all the characters at hand. So I think the easiest part was writing it just based on being able to create an environment to where you didn't need the most money. Mm -hmm. You didn't need the most I guess, elaborate kind of setups. Like when you talk about the the bank episode, right? Oh my God, the, I, the um the, the super white that we lived in when they were having a uh, they conversation, it was really important to understand the nuance of even the background. Right, right. Where people fall, when people speak, when people trip, when the door is open, when you see the pregnant woman reach over, when, when the cut point happens, all that's, all that's really, really important. Mm -hmm. And then we talking about two cameras and no playback. Wow. So how do we do that? while wow. still being able to, you know, <clears throat> live within our means for lack of better words. So I would say the most important and the easiest part was the writing of it because that was something I was willing to sit down and do by myself. Like talking to the writers, they they were really encouraging. Like they'd be like, my resource say all the time, like, man, you can write a script in like 30, 40 minutes. Like it take it take two weeks. Like if you can write a script in 30 min minutes and we and we talk about it and then you go fix it in an hour, then you should write the script and mm -hmm. then we'll go from there. So I just always do that. They was going to have my back. How did you write that bank scene, man? It was classic. Well, I just, I just, I just. Funny as hell. I just thought about, um aspects of two things that episode is really about like paranoia and growth right and it's a lot of plays on perception within the show it's like when you think about how we live you can go about your day and then go meet your friend that's never been anywhere near where you've been and be like yeah man i had a crazy day and you can tell them about it they'll never believe the stuff that we go through day to day and that's for anybody on any walk of life because we all differ right mm -hmm. so then we get to the point of fame celebrity money happiness what do these things mean it's all based on the perception that we have as people then we get into the instance of what's real and what's not real and then we, we can leave it at that as far as the visual elements of the show but when you watch the vi when you watch the show it's a bunch of stuff that is up for interpretation as if it's happening or not and that's just when you think like damn am i crazy like did he just mean mug me like am i tripping <laughs> did that car just come back around the corner mm -hmm. man i feel like i paid this bill the stuff that's simple right. that has bigger ramifications if we know how to blow the world out right so within that bank scene you have <laughs> vulnerability of someone trying to go in and have an important step in their life, having a door closed in their in, in, in their face and then finding some sort of comfort. Now when you think about how we are as people, the places that we find comfort aren't always the best. And that's an example of that. I just had this door shut in my face. They just basically told me I'm not shit, but I see something that makes me feel comfortable. No matter what these circumstances are around, what makes me feel comfortable, I have to embrace that. So it was important to kind of show them having that conversation in that situation because that's life. We always try to find a silver lining in our situation. So you in the middle of a I situation wish they like seen that. What I'm talking about, what he's saying, it's dope. Nah, it come, it come off it come off February 15th, yeah, man. It's, it it's a quick end. watch. It'll be it'll yeah. be cool, man. It's like two hours. Like, yeah. is it five or six? It's five. It's five. Okay, because yeah. I seen on IMDb it had six. Yeah, we got. Like I said we're gonna talk. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Just, 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 that's the next question. And I know Jackie started his career like working backdrop. I think it's safe background. to say like if you need any background guys, I think me and P would be more than happy to just slide in there. He too tall. That's well, not we, we, he he go right away. Now. Yeah, that's not we ain't gonna see P. We gotta make a frame for him to be able to be in the frame. Uh, that's good. I'm in. 
Prize Picks has got you covered when it comes to helping you make some money during the NBA season. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy app, and with the NBA season in full swing, you can select two or more picks, pick more or less on their projected stats, and turn $25 into $250. Prize Picks is really simple and easy to play. I can make my prize picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Prize Picks allows you to pick combo projections across football and basketball with specials so you can support all your favorite teams while still cashing in. Be sure to visit prizepicks.com slash podcast P and use podcast P for a first deposit matchup to $100. And y'all already know what time it is. Cha-ching! Cha-ching! 